Moving on, can I introduce you to Mayank Tomar? He's head of the product sales team at Netcore. You've got fans, Mayank. Uh, Netcore uh, Cloud, with over 10 years experience in consulting B2C high growth brands across the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, and India. He's won a lot of awards and appreciations for his work. Mayank is here to talk about Hit the Trifecta of Customer Experience. Please, a warm welcome from Mayank. Hello, you guys can hear me? Okay, cool. First of all, fantastic performance by our drummers. I think they did well. I hope I would be able to do the same with my slides. Let's see, hit the trifecta of customer experience is what we're gonna talk about today. And you know, Brent and people at Martech Live have been pretty tight with me. They said that 15 minutes is all what we got. So I hope I should be able to hit the trifecta. Cool. Why? why we have chosen this topic is because the attention span of the user has been reducing. So off late, we've seen that there has been a 25% 20, reduction in the attention span by the user. And that's exactly how do we, in the reduction uh, of the attention span of the user, we are still able to make an impact is what we are going to talk about today. First, seamless product discovery. It's very important when a user visits your website or your app or even your retail outlet, how immediately they get the right product. How seamlessly are they able to discover that product? So we'll talk about how best we could do with the personalization. Second, we talk about contextual walkthroughs. We all know Dubai roads, right? You miss a turn and then you're lost, right? So it's important how we get that walkthrough right for us and that's exactly how we do it on many digital platforms. Next, we have uh, interactive media. All of us would like anything that is little gamified, right? Anything that is static, we are pretty much bored with it. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to gamify the experience of the user and talk about how we can do it across channel and website and app. Let's start with the first one, seamless product discovery. So a right uh, discovery starts with right personalization, okay? If we get that piece right, it will eventually give us that kind of uplift in our conversion rate, right? So we'll talk about some of the use cases of uh, how does that work for us and things that we are doing. So there are things that we do under personalization which is uh, on home page, on category page, on various different places where a user would land up. How can we interestingly personalize the experience of the user? Then there is a lot of context setting and a lot of machine learning that gets involved to understand what user is actually doing, what's the mindset, and basis that what kind of personalization again that we can do. Here's a classic problem, okay? Now, this is a brand called as Uniqlo, and here, from the product discovery perspective, as in search personalization, now there are certain observations which I wanted to show you all. Now, here we are, we are searching, let's search something, okay, let's search men shorts. You see there are shirts being listed. I don't know why they are showing shorts. That's because they say short shirts. They are doing a keyword match here. That's a problem. So if you look at, I am not looking for shorts. I'm looking for shorts. These are t-shirts, right? Then my discovery is going bad. Intent of the user who is looking for a search is much, much higher as far as the conversion is concerned. And they do have a category. Look at this. If you search shorts, there are proper shorts there. But People come and when they search, they are not exactly putting what they actually thinking, right? They just put what they feel they're right. Likewise, there are other examples like full sleeve shirt and you see that there is just one shirt and which is not even full sleeve. Again, they have a category, proper category which talks about dress shirts. Dress shirts as we know specifically in US is about, you know, formal shirts, but they are not able to again do a, a, a synonym match, but it's more of a keyword match that they have done. Next is children t-shirt. We all know who children are, right? But I think they are not aware who they are. And look at the result, they're not showing any result. They know kids, they only know kids. So only kids shirts are available, no children shirts are available. That's what, the, uh, that's what they are missing out on. Again, synonym match missing. Here, jackets. I have C missing, jackets. Uh, there was a spell check problem and again, they're not able to show the results, but they do have jackets if we do that right. So these are common problems, and I'm sure in the room people you are would have observed something of this sort, right? With the experience that you are getting with people who are coming and visiting your website or app, 
or even your store, right? I, my accent would be a little different. I, I, I want pants, pants, and you give me something else. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Cool. Uh, we move on to the next, and we see what is a seamless experience. Now, this is one of our brands who's working with us, and what we're doing right with them is what exactly I wanted to talk about. First of all, we'll search something. Let's search dress shirts. Dress shirt, as we know, are formal shirts, right? It understands what dress shirts mean, and it is showing you all the uh, listing basis that. Next, shirt dress. Now it understands. So what we have done is we have interchanged this time. Shirt dress, instead of shirt dress, now they understand the context behind this, and now the results are different. Because shirt dress would mean uh, dresses which are uh, different and not exactly shirt dress. Now, here, this is a long query. It says red, long, sleeveless dress. And what do we get with that from the search query is basically exactly like that, red, long, sleeveless dress. Now, what you also see is not just about red, but uh, synonyms of red, which is uh, cherry or uh, you know scarlet. All those colors are also shown, so it understands what resonates with that color and also shows you results basis that. And understand that. Now we remove sleeveless, we only make it sleeve. Now it understands the difference between sleeve and the sleeveless and basis that again, the results are shown. I hope some of the ladies here would like a few of the dresses. Maybe you can visit this website. Uh, do it via search so that we get attributed through the conversion point of view. Thank you so much. Cool. Moving on to the next part is where we have dresses for a cocktail party. I think a lot of you ladies in the room would do that. Let me just do that, right? Google does it good. They, they give you out good results on that. But here, they are actually understanding NLP. Now, this is NLP logic that we have put up. And basis that, again, the results are shown, <clears throat> which understand for a cocktail party, these are the kind of dresses that someone should go for. All of this gets powered, gives you more intent, more conversion, because you understand your customer a little better. You understand their attention and basis that these results are out. Look at this, t-shirts, 7531 results. I put T's, now you look at the result. Again, 7531 items are there, but the listing is different this time. That's machine learning intent, understanding T's versus t-shirts and showing you a different result. Reorganizing those products for you. And likewise with T slash shirts. Okay, one more we'll take up. Now here, if you look at, we have done a mistake. We have put a wrong brand name plus sneakers as such, but they are able to do the correction and tell you uh, under that brand uh, the sneakers that are being offered. All right, moving on. Now these recommendation can go across wherever you can. Search is one place, but you know you should do it on a home page where again, generally, doing it right should give you 90 to 110% higher CTR. <clears throat> In case of category page, you will see that 60 to 80% higher CTRs there. And these are just screen grab recording guys for some of our clients who are working with us. Uh, likewise, on a product listing page as well, with 6 to 9% higher increase in add to carts. Same, lot of gamification, right? So everyone on their phone right now have got Instagram. Please, hands up, Instagram. Let's bring that experience on the website as well, right? Why can't we do that? Let's give them that swipe functionality like Tinder or Instagram and, you know, let's engage with them. Not everyone who comes to your website has the intent to always buy. They want to also engage and understand the kind of collections you have. Now, this is what I like. I saw this uh, case study on Gartner's. It's about just taking one intent and attribute of the user that is date of birth of the child Based on the time you visit the website, the experience is changing. Of course, the baby is growing, right? After a point, maybe you won't need diapers, but you more need a potty training. So that's what should be, right? Cool. Uh, moving on to the next one, contextual walkthroughs. Now, it's about forming a certain habit loop, right? People here, I think most of you, again, would be using WhatsApp. Why? There is Viber as well. There is Zalo. There are a lot of, there is WeChat. There is a lot of, tools in the market via which you can use to chat. Of course, one point is that your friends are not there. The other point is the experience is pretty good. You are habituated to the experience that is given by them. That's exactly what we do under our contextual nudges and walkthroughs. 
This is a very classic example. Now we are, play, we are trying to play with the human mind. If I stand here, start pointing towards Brent. Brent is not looking at me, but you all start, try to search for him, right? So what, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to guide the user. That's what even uh, when, you, when you're on the road, when you're trying to go to any place, that's what you do, right? You are guided to go to a place through a lot of directions. Same is done by a lot of uh, brands who are doing it effectively. Let's say if you search Breaking Bad, it certainly tells you a tooltip which says, would you like to see the availability of this on Netflix, Hulu, and other OTT platforms? Or you download this Google Pay app, and the first time you're trying to do a transaction, it highlights and tells you, this is how you can get started using the app. Next is, again, a subtle tooltip uh, when you're doing a transaction from the Amazon app. So it is already being adopted by some of these large brands. Also gives us the advocacy that, hey, this is very, very, very important. How do we do it? Some brand examples that I would like to show you. This is a classic FinTech app from India working with us. They have a problem. They've got a good crowd. They've got good people coming to their, website, uh, to their app. But the experience of guiding them on how they can adopt a specific feature is via these tool tips. And it is contextually uh, walked through given to them based on the kind of feature that they're looking for. <coughs> Airtel Payments Bank. Uh, is, is one of the new bank, it's part of Telecom Airtel, and they again, a uh, lot of things that you can do from the Telecom app. How many of you in the room use Etisalad? How many are there for DU? Few of you, okay, cool. So if you come to India, let's go for Airtel. Again, our client doing well, and they, if you try to go for, uh, let's say any of the experiences, the tool tips which are there are powered from Netcore, and that's exactly what we do. Can be done on website as well. This is uh, Upoint from Indonesia, and they're doing this very effectively on uh, various placeholders, guiding users like what exactly they should be doing, and put a lot of context behind that. All right, moving on to the next one is bringing interactive media. Now, I spoke of gamification being very important. How can we do it is what we wanted to show you. Now, this is again an inspiration. This is Pindudu. This is a, a Chinese-based app-first company very similar to Farmwell. I'm sure many of you would have played that, right? Here, uh, what they're doing is, they're giving physical rewards to users who are actively engaging on the app. How do they do that? People, again, raise of hands, who like apples? Very few people like apples. I, is, it, is it expensive here in Dubai or what? Cool. <laughs> All right, so that's what you do. You have raised a tree. Now it's time that fruits will come, and that's where if, let's say the fruits are ready, they will actually send you fruits. So people who like apples, maybe they should download this app, experience, get free apples. Likewise, you would have experienced this, everyone has got a phone, everyone receives a push notification, be it from a, uh, uh, any media brand or from an e-commerce brand, from a travel company, and you would have experienced a lot of these experiences, which is to do with rich media, right? They're very engaging, you like those. But we, I want to also extend this. It's not just on the app push, but we can do it something very interestingly on email as well. A short video I'll play will give you the context behind what I'm trying to say, and then we'll go through one example. are generally known to generate a click, right? And after that, you come to a landing page and then you engage. We are doing things differently here. We are trying to engage users inside the email itself to the point that they can even do a transaction. Please don't bother your IT team to create landing pages because now you can do it inside email itself. And that's how you save on a lot of retention cost and you know the kind of ROI that you can get. 
How did we get, it, get to this is basically third party cookie data as we know it's highly discouraged, it might die soon. So what's the, what, what, what should be doing is collecting more of zero party and first party data and make more sense out of this. That will really help with this problem, which is basically there are more emails now being sent uh, to users mailbox, the kind of engagement that we see is declining, so we need to innovate. And that innovation will help us with more interactive email, better experience, better engagement, the customer lifetime value is much, much, much better, zero party data is being collected, and from deleting your email, it gets very delightful experience for the user. Again, I'm good with videos and also I'll play another video for you all. <clears throat> now this is about how a AMP powered email would look like. This is my mailbox, please ignore all the other emails. Cool, going down here, the first thing that I wanted to show you is, you know, getting a, a opinion, like a rating from the user which can be collected, data points that can be collected. <clears throat> now that's a radio button. Uh, we are collecting gender, postal code of the user, so the lead form can be collected inside the mail itself. You could also go ahead and, you know, gamify the experience, play some games. Now this is like a spinner uh, wheel kind, and then it could be a quiz that we could also set up. I was wrong with all the answers, I, I should have done it right, but yeah. Lot of us would want to also, uh, like I said, transaction can be done inside the email itself and this is the experience uh, we can at least get from the users who would have at least transacted once because we have the data. Real time feed can be integrated, especially with a lot of media brands, right? You open your newsletter in the morning, the news is old by the time you open it in evening, right? So how can you get a real time feed? and show you the, show the latest news to the users. And there are many, many examples. We can, uh, I want to show you this example as well. This is on product carousel. Uh, okay, sorry, I guess I didn't play. All right, so that was a carousel. I think that was just an image. But yeah, overall, whatever we have shown is something that we do. Let's catch up, let's discuss about this. Let's understand how these successful stories is something that we can implement. Let's have more innovation, let's have more gamification, let's have more videos in our slides, let's not have static content. Thank you so much. Yes.